Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and do they sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better. I hear it all the time, but I'm not so sure, and today we're going to answer this question one video at a time, as we always do, by hitting up the runner-up on our poll. Now, actually, there were two runners-up that were tied, uh, Sun Kill Moon and Greta Van Fleet. And I did record a Greta Van Fleet video, and I'm not sure what to do with it yet, so you'll be surprised when you see it. Uh, but anyway, so today we're going to hit up Sun Kill Moon. Let me adjust this just a little bit. We're live here. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and hit this. But before we do, I, I want to tell you a story. You know, sometimes my life intersects with the music. So, uh, and also I want to tell you for transparency, I have heard Sun Kill Moon and a little bit of Red House Painters, the first band that uh, Mark was in. And I've actually even listened to a little bit of his solo material. So I know he's a pretty, kind of, a little bit of a bleak guy, right? So, uh, but anyway, the story is that in 1982, when I was 24 years old, uh, I was watching uh, television. I love boxing, and I was watching Ray Mancini and Duke Kim. So I saw that fight. I saw it live, and I saw um, I, I saw um, Duke Kim. I, I'm just making sure I got the pronunciation right. But I saw him uh, try to get up and then fall to the canvas and. Nobody was sure what happened, and then they cut away to another program, and we read later in the newspaper that he had died. So, uh, yeah, I will never forget it. It was, um, you know, maybe some of the memories a little bit fuzzy now, but for the most part, I really do remember it. And, you know, it was really a tragedy because the boxer's mother committed suicide three months later, and then the next year, the referee committed suicide. Now, that I did not know until today when I read up on that. I knew about the mother. Uh, that was in the news, but I, I didn't remember reading about the referee. So it was really quite tragic. Three people dying. Uh, the referee shot himself. So, wow. Um, anyway, uh, this so even though there's three songs on the album named after boxers, this one is not specifically about Duke, Duck Ku Kim. Um, but, it, but it's used as a uh, reference for how he feels, uh, that idea that the angels did not come down uh, to rescue Duck Koo Kim. So, yeah, pretty intense. Uh, I read the lyrics in advance. They're pretty bleak, but in the last couple stanzas, there's a lot of hope at the end of this. So anyway, this is 14 minutes. So let's get into this. It was recommended by Orchid. Thank you, Orchid. And uh, we put this up on the poll, and it tied for second place with Greta Van Fleet. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, hit this up. And let me get it back to the beginning. And here we go. <laughs> hmm. The panning is it's very interesting. What's going on in the left channel? It comes in, it goes out, it comes in, it goes out, the drums. Oh, that's pretty guitar. Hmm, very nice. Wow, that is really melodic, really pretty. A lot of songs about dreams, right?
So I just remembered the song that I know so well. Um, I knew I'd listened to them before and I couldn't think of any particular song that came to the top of my head. Uh, but now I remember it's a song called Carissa. And it's about going to a, a funeral for his uh, cousin, I think. And I've listened to that song a few times. Uh, the voice now, it's all coming back to me, all the memories. Uh, Carissa is a devastating song. All right, let's keep going on this. Uh, the guitar tones are so beautiful. Sorry about that. But an angel came down. An angel came down. Mancini and Daku Kim. Those electric guitar tones. Little symbol work there coming in. Oh. Nice. Ah, oh, some bells.
This rhythm section is excellent. Perfectly understated. Sounds like a treated or muted mandolin. Stop it once again, uh, once again briefly, just because I, I don't know if this video will be blocked for copyright. But uh, I did read a little bit about his background. That uh, I don't, if I knew, I had forgotten that his uh, wife or girlfriend, uh, Katie, I think was her name, uh, died of cancer. So <laughs> this guy's had uh, had some hard times for sure. So he's uh, this song's a little bit autobiographical. Let's keep going. like bells and mandolins, so unique. Breakdown. Acoustic. Hmm. That interplay. Wow. Hmm. Man, everything just interlocks here, doesn't it?
reminds me of an acoustic version of what the war on drugs do. Just those shimmering layers. It's almost like a scat. That's interesting. Some interesting sonic textures added in here. Nice symbol work. Mm. Oh wow, a little bit of studio chatter. Well this was awesome, so let me talk about what I like the best. I think the rhythm section, the bass and drums, the way they moved the song, I mean the song had so much movement in it. And then of course Mark's vocals are so emotional. And he's a great lyric writer, uh, he has a great eye for detail. Um, absolutely, absolutely love this song. Uh, and then, you know, for most of the song you had electric guitars that were doing this beautiful interplay. So there's a few bands that do that. You know, on a much more aggressive level, I've been listening to a lot of Sonic Youth preparing for a, a, a video, and of course their interplay is very unique. Uh, the two electric guitars in each channel, beautiful. And then you brought in those bells, and like I say, I think maybe a mandolin. Uh, not really sure what that instrument was, but that was beautiful. Uh, do I have any complaints? No. Do I have any quibbles? Yes, I have two quibbles. that. Uh, bring this song down just a notch. Uh, but again, they're quibbles. But one is that there's a lot of reverb on his voice. 
and um, and so some of the lyrics, uh, if you if I hadn't read the lyrics in advance, I would have a hard time making them out. Uh, so I, you know, I think maybe uh, roll back the reverb a little bit and have the vocals a little bit more up front in the mix with a little bit crisper enunciation, so I can, because the lyrics are really the star of the song, or should be the star of the song, and somehow they're not. The music takes a back seat to the lyrics here, so I guess um, that would be the mix. Uh, yeah, a small quibble about the mix, about the vocal production, I guess, is what I would say. The vocal production is um, a little, you know, I really had to lean in to hear the words. And then I would say the other quibble is the song did not feel long until around the 11 and a half minute mark. And right when we got into that scat singing, that uh, falsetto or high register, I, I th you know, frankly, I could have done without that section, and I think you could have chopped two, two and a half minutes out of the song, maybe made it a 12 minute song instead of 14 and a half minutes, and it would have tightened it up just a little bit and made it perfect. But the instrumentation was stellar. Uh, so like I say, the vocal production and the little bit of scat singing at the end there, those elements were not my favorite. Uh, but lyrically, top notch instrumentation top-notch, emotion top-notch. Really love the song. I'm going to give it an A instead of an A minus, or A plus, I'm sorry, uh, because of those little quibbles that I talked about. But uh, Orchid, thanks for the recommendation. I uh, do like this band, Sun Kill Moon, quite a bit. But I pretty much only know that one album, that whatever album Carissa is on. I've listened to that whole album front to back, and that's the song that always kind of jumped out at me and that I had put on a playlist because I used to make lists of my favorite albums of every year. But there's a lot of stuff that I missed. So that's why, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this channel is to catch up, fill in the holes. So great stuff. But like I say, I think the drum and bass were the uh, sort of the quiet superstars of this song. Um, the drums, the way he just was so understated and then brought in a little bit of cymbal work and then a couple times picked up the tempo and then brought it back down. Uh, I thought the drummer and, and the bass player, but yeah, the drummer especially, just I really noticed some very tasteful drums in this song. So this is a long video. We'll cut it short. If you like what we're doing on the channel, hit the like or subscribe button. It really helps with growth and then you'll um, get notifications. And as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.